All right, so here are three different sizes of straws. Okay, so a regular kind of drinking straw right there. One of those you know, thick bubble tea straws. And then here's a, a super monster, you know, thick tubing here, as you can see there. Um, so now you came here because you wanted to be able to know, okay? And so here's the, you know, little experiment, of course. If you put in um, a, a straw, okay, and you put it inside of a, a fluid, so in this case, I just have water, okay, inside of there, and then you close it down, okay, with your thumb, all right, right at the top there. So if I close that down, um, you notice that, oh, okay, so notice in here, I have a towel underneath, so if it spills out, that's fine. Okay, so you notice that it's holding the liquid, right? Now notice there's a little drop that fell out, okay, within there. Okay, and then if I let go, it falls back down. So now that's with a, a thinner straw, so not very difficult for us to do that. Now, if I take a, a thicker one, uh, so it's a little bit more challenging. So if I do the same thing, so if I put it in, um, I close it up on top, okay, within here, um, and then I lift it out. Um, so notice the few drops are coming out, but overall it's still holding the liquid, okay? So you can see that liquid in there, okay? And it's holding it down, although, you know, a drop or so fell fell off. Now th those little drops that fell off and then the little meniscus that form forms at the bottom there is important for us, all right? So I'll talk about that. Okay, so now I'm gonna let it go. Now, if you try to do that with a, a much um, thicker, okay, tubing like this, it's not gonna be as, as easy to do. Now, in terms of experimentation, sometimes if you see it, okay, um, so I'm gonna just show you. All right, so let's really try to put that in here. So notice that's quite a lot, okay, and pretty high. Now, if I lift this up, it falls out, all right? Okay, this is for, for a thick one. So it doesn't seem to work, but the height was pretty, pretty high up there. Now, if I take just a little bit, okay, in here, so I'm not gonna go as high. Um, now notice what happens. Ooh, I can kind of hold it, right? So the liquid's still there because the height is not very high. So that is really important for us. Now I'm gonna try a little bit more. I, I should probably still be able to hold this one. Yeah, it's still really fighting it there at the bottom, but it's still holding. All right, and then as you saw, you know, if I really dip it in there and there's a lot, now it ha it's having a really hard time. Although oh, I'm still trying to, mm, no, okay, let it go. I kind of got excited because I didn't go that high. But in any case, so very, very difficult to do that and hold that liquid in with, um, you know, a very thick straw, meaning, you know, your diameter in here is uh, pretty big. So very easy to do with thinner straws, you know, pretty decent with even bubble, okay, straws in here, but very difficult unless the height is very low, okay, on these little tubings, which now become thicker and thicker. So let's explain this through physics. Why exactly does this happen? All right, okay, so let's try to explain it. Now, if you do wanna go deeper and understand the full out physics, you are gonna to have to know a little bit about pressure overall. So. I'll try to point out some links for you if you want to learn about these concepts, but I will assume that you are familiar with it if you're really, really keen on understanding. So the basic principle is the following. If your thumb is on top of the straw, then what will happen is you're going to have a certain amount of pressure, which is going to be pushing this up. This is the atmospheric pressure, which is all around us. All right. Now, if that pushes it up and then inside of here, you have pressure. So you have air, which is trapped. So that would have been the pressure of the air um, overall. And now uh, you also will have some pressure. Okay. So all the way at the bottom, which is going to be coming from the liquid, which is being held up. So that if you have this, which is smaller than this. So again, if you can see that and you're comfortable with the fact of knowing that, oh, if the one at the bottom is bigger than the one on top, something happens within the system that I guess it's just pushing it upwards. So that's the kind of simple layman terms explanation. Well, if the one at the bottom is bigger than the one on top, okay, then it will just kind of hold up the liquid. Okay. Now let's go deeper for those who really want to be able to understand. And why would that pressure of the air, which is trapped, 
would be lower than the pressure outside because isn't it the same air that you just held up with your thumb um, that is true but something happens okay in terms of the dynamics of the system in this case the system which is the straw um, that the air pressure changes it actually drops okay to stabilize um, the, the liquid and hold it up okay so um, first of all if you want to go deeper then we have the following so I'm going to draw a free body diagram so let's say this is the straw itself okay overall but I'm just drawing it as a square and what we have is this we have the atmospheric pressure from the bottom trying to push that water upwards all right so I'm going to keep referring to the atmospheric pressure in this way we also do have a very small amount of pressure which is going to be trying to push it up and keep it up there which is coming from the adhesion and the surface tension so st for surface tension at the bottom okay now uh, that surface tension okay the equation for this is actually two multiplied by a constant so in this case depends on what liquid it is so this is the surface tension per meter um, overall that you have again if you want to learn about that i'll put up a link okay about surface tensions up above there just so if you want to be able to learn that in um, and this okay uh, equation um, can be derived just simply by taking the uh, force of tension divided by the area which is the definition of pressure so for this for our purposes okay this is the uh, equation for the surface tension now for water this is actually very small so this is about newtons per meter all right so it's a very 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 tiny amount again we don't expect surface tension to have a huge amount of forces that it can support now on the other side we have the pressure of the air um, which is going to be close to the atmospheric pressure but it is going to drop all right and then i'll show you and then we also have the pressure which is coming in from the liquid itself. The liquid has a weight, right? So um, in that case, this would have been the pressure of the liquid L, and this is the density. In this case, it's gonna be the density of the water. So the density of the water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, approximately, all right? And then times G, which is the gravity, and then H, which, which would have been the height over here um, all the way through. So that's the height of that. So we can calculate exactly what that is, all right? You know, we can even assume, you know, so let's say this was approximately 10 centimeters. I did hold quite a bit, especially on the regular drinking straw. I couldn't hold as much on the very thicker straws, but I did hold some, all right? So here overall, um, so this would have been just simply 0 0.1 meters if we wanted in SI units. So, you know, substituting this back in, um, so all of this, you know, this would have been 1,000 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 0 0.1, which is about 980 pascals. Um, so not huge, but, you know, not tiny, not nothing and then this one in terms of the surface tension for those who are wondering so if you multiply this through um so overall so it would have been two so multiplied by okay this constant right here and divided by the radius for her regular drinking straw so the radius is rather small though i you know did use so for example this one okay right here you know it's about five millimeters so half a centimeter okay so 2.5 um, millimeters okay overall so if we had this okay so there you have it all right so as you can see the surface tension is kind of negligible all right and as the radius gets bigger and bigger and bigger because this isn't a denominator then the pressure keeps uh, dropping and dropping and dropping um, uh, overall so this really becomes negligible all right but in case somebody was wondering you know what happens to surface tensions or adhesions or something it's not that it's non-existent it's just if you make the straw a little bit thicker okay they do drop off so really um, now we clearly see in the experiment that it holds okay so if you would write out the equation here you would have something like this so you would have the atmospheric pressure so that's pointing upwards plus the pressure from the surface tension adhesions. And then on the right-hand side, you have the pressure of the air which is trapped, uh, plus the pressure 
okay, of the liquid, all right, so overall. So now, if that is balanced, when the liquid is not falling, because these two must be equal to each other, then what that tells us is that the air pressure must have changed. So now what this would mean, if you would write this out in total, I'm going to zero this out, all right? So it's approximately zero, though not necessarily. It does play some role, but not very big. So you're going to get that, and this is going to be pressure from the liquid, which is just this right here. So notice the subtraction sign here, which means that this must have dropped. Now you might say, what do you mean it's dropped, right? We closed it down, so the air didn't escape anywhere. So how did it drop? Okay, to hold in the static, right? So static equilibrium. Well, what happened is this is Boyle's law, all right? So if you take a look and you look up Boyle's law, you will notice that pressure times volume is basically constant, all right? Assuming that the temperatures don't change. Okay, so this is, you know, one of the PV equals NRT, etc. So, you know, if you still remember that from physics, doesn't matter. But if it's constant, then what you had is P pressure initially, so that's the what we trapped inside of the straw. The we had a certain volume, which was the initial volume. This, and let's say this is final. This is little F there, pressure final, which is the adjusted. So that means it's this right here, right? So that's the adjusted air pressure that must have dropped. And now the idea is, how in the world can this drop? Well, the only way that this can drop is if this has adjusted, meaning the volume inside of that straw, the volume inside of here, right here, adjusted. So what happens is, and we saw that in the experiment, that your liquid at the bottom, it starts to fall down. Sometimes a drop will fall, which means that, you know, that means on top, you have a little bit more um, room of volume for that air to be in, or a meniscus kind of falls in, falls down, so as it kind of shifts down over. Now, you might say, well, that's going to be very tiny. Yeah, you are right. It's not going to be a lot. It's going to be a very small change in terms of volume as this just shifts ever so slightly. But even a 1% shift, so it adjusts. Now, of course, how much does it adjust? It adjusts enough because we can see that it's static, right, overall. So that means this air must have dropped ever so slightly. Now, notice 1%, we wouldn't even really be able to see that because that's one one hundredth, right, of that space that we have in the straw. It's very tiny if you've divided it down, down you know, to a um, hundred portions, right? So we wouldn't even probably be able to see that with our naked eye. So that's what happens. Now, as this goes up, notice that the pressure, so PF is equal to whatever was there initially, VI, divided by VI plus delta V. And obviously, so notice VI and VI is here. So if you're adding this, that means that this pressure, okay, went down from what it was originally. That's because of that adjustment in the volume. And there you have it. So that's the reason why that air pressure will drop. Now, it's a dynamic system. So it doesn't drop instantly, it adjusts. And if you do have your straws, which are thicker, all right, notice that you're now carrying a lot more weight, okay, related. So there's the weight is the force, which is coming downwards. So yes, surface tension is obviously almost as non-existent, so that can't hold it up, okay? And then the adjustment of air pressures, technically in theory, if it adjusted instantly, you know, it might still hold it but it's a dynamic system. So as soon as the water starts to shift, it doesn't adjust the pressure up above fast enough. It doesn't drop it down fast enough so that the pressure at the bottom can still hold that liquid. It can do it, and as you saw it in the experiment with very you know little bit of height, okay? But as you got more and more height into it, more and more liquid, that was much, much harder to be able to try to hold it. And if you got even thicker and thicker tubes, Okay, obviously it would have just gotten harder and harder because the system is dynamic. So for thinner straws, okay, it adjusts fast enough and then it comes to an equilibrium. 
okay? And for those who know about equilibriums in terms of, for example, if you took differential equation or calculus, okay, you know that you can have an unstable system, right? So you can have an equilibrium, but if you adjust and if you move away from the equilibrium ever so slightly, it just goes unstable, right? So in this case, the liquid falls, falls out. It doesn't adjust fast enough. But you have a stable equilibrium, right? Even a small little perturbation away can still adjust the system and still hold it back. Okay, and that's what's happening within here. So that is actually like the full out physics explanation um, that I wanted to be able to provide to you. Now I've had a video like this before, but just a much simpler explanation, um, and it seemed to work great. Uh, until you know, there was a, some few comments uh, from people who were like, "Hey, hold on a second! Like, what is exactly happening?" So I thought to make this video, and hopefully, this will now explain things a lot better. All right. Okay. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in a future video. Bye, everybody.